What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. First off, we hit a thousand subs. That's crazy, man. I started this channel in January and with no intentions of even gaining subscribers in general, just wanted to put it up there to like look back on what I like have done, you know? And uh, it's just crazy, man. Like 1.2K, which to me is crazy, but Anyways, I saw in the previous video of the reaction about the WRX that a lot of you wanted to know what was done to it and uh, the mods and stuff like that. So I just figured I'd make a little video on everything that's done to the car and what's coming for it. Cause I do have a couple things coming for it. But yeah, I mean, here it is. To start off, we'll start with the engine, I guess. Cause that's probably what you guys want to know more about. So it is an IEG stage 2.5. Uh, Semi-closed deck block, forged internals, um, Cobb, actually Perrin turbo inlet, Cobb three port boost controller, AM intake, process west top mount, turbo smart bypass valve, it has the Cobb flex fuel kit, has a Blausch 440 XT turbo, Tome up pipe, actually sorry, Grim speed up pipe with a tile 38 millimeter external wastegate, has Tome unequal length headers, has an NVIDIA Catalyst downpipe. Obviously it runs on pump and ethanol. As far as the catback goes, it is an NVIDIA R400 catback, has BC coilovers, um, parent front and rear sway bars, cart boy end links. So that's basically it for the motor. I mean, it's been super strong so far. The car made 487 the way it sits right now on ethanol on E74. Usually when I get ethanol from the gas station that I get it from, it's usually like E65 since it's been like the winter time. So I don't know what that would equate to, probably like 450, 450. Um, but yeah, so that's it for the motor. It's pretty straightforward. It's a super simple setup. There's nothing crazy. It has stock head, stock cam, stock valves, all that stuff, literally the short block with all the bolt-ons in the ethanol kit. And it's personal opinion that is the safest way to go. You don't gotta worry about head issues. You don't gotta worry about detonation with the ethanol. The turbo isn't a 6466. It's a little guy, so it like gets right into it. It doesn't have that top end that a 646 would have, but it's very streetable. It's like a perfect streetable car. Like it. 400 foot pounds of torque at 3,500 RPMs. There's nothing like it. And then as far as the wheel and tire setup, they are Ray's Gram Lights, 57 DR, 18 by 9.5, 38 millimeter offset. The tires are Federal 595 RSRRs and a 265 35 18 squared. Um, they fit perfect. I did have to have the um, fenders and quarter panels rolled all the way around because it did rub. Um, but as of right now, I can fill the car with five people and there's absolutely no rubbing whatsoever. Headlights are OE massive, yeah, OE massive headlights. They're super sick. And what's what's cool about this is the, so this is a base model. So it has halogen bulbs, they're not HID. So my friend has a um, premium with HID. When you have the halogen base model, the C light, like his just lights up white and he, his turn signal is like here or, or over here, I think. But since mine's the base model, these are actually sequential. So they're white. And then when you hit the blinker, they, they're switchbacks, which you can't do on the premium, which is pretty cool. I have just your basic eBay front lip, strafe design, side splitters. I have the rear spat um, pieces. I just got these off eBay. They were like 60 bucks. Another thing I did was it, did, it never had a wing. Like it, it, it didn't even have like the WRX like wing or anything so i put that wing on and not gonna lie the day i put it on absolutely hated it it's it looked terrible and i think it was because it was such a drastic change to have the wing on here and i'm not trying to be an sti poser i have no sti badges anywhere on the car and then as far as the interior goes i have the in focus e-brake boot and shift boot a lot of you guys were wondering about the shifts. Let me tell you something. So that is a bone stock STI shifter. It has the STI six speed trans, ACT street HD clutch kit, OEM STI axles, R180 diff. It's a bone stock STI drivetrain. 
And a lot of you guys were like, oh my God, like he's gonna break the car, he's gonna do this, he's gonna do that, that diff hates him, this and that. For those who don't know, and for those who do know, the STI six speed, no matter what year, the drive shaft, the axles, the diff, they can take one hell of an abuse. I have no doubt in my mind that at this power level, I will ever hurt anything but possibly a synchro. I will never snap an axle. I will never break the diff. I will never shatter a gear. I will drive this car like this, the way I did in that video, forever at this power level. And the, literally, the only issue I think it would ever have is a synchro. Mainly third. I think third will be the one that goes eventually. But I mean, there's people with 800 wheel horsepower running at the track with four Hoosiers all around, launching at 6K on a bone stock six speed drivetrain, no issues. They're super strong. That's why it's so, such a big deal. You know, five speed, that's a whole different story. I would have broke it already. Actually, I did break it. That's why it, uh, that's why it has a six speed. But yeah, then back to the interior. Has the uh, Faction Fab carbon fiber flat bottom steering wheel. I went with the leather on the sides because the suede will just wear out. Brom seats. Uh, these are the, I forget, Elite X, Elite Series or whatever. They're super nice. They get a little dirty because I'm a tech and I uh, when I get in, they just start like you can see right here. But you can just clean it off with leather cleaner. This. A lot of people were upset about the no seatbelt situation. And I understand those buckles for these aftermarket rails, those are planted seat brackets. The OEM buckle has a bolt that goes into it and there's no nut, it just threads into the factory seat bracket. So I put those seats in about two or three days before that video and I didn't never had time to go to the hardware store to get a nut for the other side because the planted brackets are different. So it's been fixed, they work. We will now move forward from that. My apologies. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's basically it. The car is pretty simple. Still has the stock WRX brakes. That's probably the next on the list. And then as far as things, as far as things go with um, the stuff to come, I have over here, I have the uh, Cobb SF intake. I have an ETS front mount coming with the tile blow off valve. I'm gonna switch over to speed density. AEM 3.5 bar map sensor, AEM intake air temp sensor. I got ID 1300 injectors. Right now I have Deeseworks 1300 CC injectors and a Deeseworks pump. Also, I don't know if anyone knows this or knows why. Someone tell me why ID 1050 X's are 500 bucks, right? 1050 CC. You want that extra 250 CC for the 1300s? They're now $900. I, don't, I, I mean, I get it, but I don't get it. Why is it four hundred dollars more? It's like the same thing, but whatever. That was a that, was, that hurt the that hurt the wallet a little. But yeah, I mean it's pretty simple. Some of you might wonder why I still have the stock manifold. Fun fact for the stock manifold: it actually flows better and is cooler than the STI manifold. So it's not worth it to do anything with the intake manifold unless you're going to go with like a Cosworth manifold or AMS intake manifold, something like that. So I'm just going to keep that for now. I was debating on do oh I also got a Cobb fuel pressure sensor kit. So when I went back when I went to the dyno to get this car tuned, we had to keep the boost at 23 pounds for the stock map sensor. Uh, another thing too is sorry, this video is kind of all over the place. So the stock map is right there. So the air comes in through the fender to the map sensor. And that MAP sensor stock is also the intake air temp sensor. So it's reading the, in, the IETs from the fender, not at the throttle body where it should be, so it's not accurate. But long story short, I went to the dyno to get it tuned and I, there was a lot of safety things I didn't have, like the fuel pressure sensor, I didn't have a uh, intake air temp sensor at the throttle body. So we kept it conservative-ish. Um, I was debating on doing an FP green. We're gonna do a, uh, I'm gonna get it tuned again, make sure everything's good and then I think I'm just gonna save up and do a rot rotated setup with a 6266 and then see how long the motor lasts on that because it's still a open deck, semi open deck. And then uh, depending on how that goes, money wise, I'll step it up to the 6466. What else? Oh, the most important thing that you are gonna 
call me the laziest guy you've ever seen. This box right here. Right after I got my car tuned, me and the tuner were both amazed. I don't know how I didn't even notice or remember that this was an important thing to get. This car its whole life has never had an AOS. Never, never had one. Never had an issue. Never, don't lose oil, don't consume oil, nothing like that. So I have had this sitting in my garage for probably nine months, but it is the IEG uh, competition series AOS that is also gonna go in. Um, I just haven't put it in because with the competition series, you have to get a retune because it dumps to atmosphere and it opens the PCB system. And uh, I've been like, you know, Subarus, you like change one thing, you gotta get it tuned and like that's money. So I was just waiting until I got everything in, put everything on at once and then go back. But I don't like, I don't drive this car, you know? It literally sees like, I drive it maybe like twice a month. And the other thing too is, if you're gonna build a car like this, you're gonna build the motor, you're gonna do the turbo, the intercooler, the six speed swap, everything, all that stuff. You wanna drive it, you know what I mean? Like, I drive this car how I pictured it to be driven. And I wouldn't imagine, like, that's where the, to me, that's where the fun is, you know? You, drive, you, build, you, you buy it, you build it, you drive it, you break it, you fix it. It's as simple as that. And uh, I mean, some people thought that uh, I just started it cold and went on my way ripping on it. Trust me, I, I know not to do that. I'm well into the car scene. I always let it warm up. I mean, it's been like, it's been, had this built motor that's set up for two years and it's never had a problem. So it's treated me well. I've never had an issue with Subarus. Knock on, uh, knock on cardboard, never had an issue, never blown a motor, never nothing. Actually, the first motor blew, but it didn't really blow, it just cracked a ring line. Um, and that was also on this, the, all the bolt-on setup. It was on ethanol, it was on the 440. It made like four, 450 and it cracked a ring line on the stock block, but it lasted like 30,000 miles, which is pretty cool. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I actually brought this car to the track. So I'm bringing the C63 to the track on Friday. And I brought this car to the track a while ago and on this setup, this tune, I didn't have these tires or anything. And it ran an 11.7 at 116 or 117. That video is on my Instagram if you want to check it out. I'll try to put it right here. Yeah, Instagram right here if you want to see the video. This is the track. But yeah, I mean, to sum up this video, this is it. I got some stuff coming. I'm going to make some videos on it. If you guys are liking the content, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. And then, like I said, I did get the seatbelt buckles fixed and everything. Apologies for that. But yeah. Peace out. I'll see you guys in the install videos.